Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Let the righteous rejoice and be glad. It's the Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us greet one another always in the beauty of holiness.
Aleluya.
Let your kingdom come. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who has brought you the land of Mitzrayim, and now thou slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that, which is in the earth above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim, and a jealous El, between the crookedness of the fathers and the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me. But showing them and commitment to the thousands of those who love me and come my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh only him to not, for Yahweh does not leave unpunished and bring him to not. Remember the Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you labor to do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh only him. In it, you not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days you have made heaven and the earth, the sea, and none other than them. And rest the seventh day, therefore you have blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh your only has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. All right, hallelujah. Lord to the king.
Sure is nice to know who you are, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Was a bunch of nobodies, a bunch of misfits. Lying, two-faced dogs of sinners. On your way to a living, burning hell. From, from that to your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and mighty and do exploits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm a child of the king. Nothing else to do in his life but to serve him. Most high, but y'all, we bless you this morning for allowing us to attend another one of your great and strong and mighty feast days. Inviting us to your Shabbat to rest with you. We need this. Every single week we do. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. From the very beginning, even before the foundations was laid, you was mindful of us. You even had us pictured before we even knew ourselves. We only can hope that we can bring glory to your esteem. We only can hope that we can bring honor in service to you so that others will be convicted because of our lifestyles and our conviction for serving you. We thank you for the blood that never loses its power. We thank you because our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank you for Yahshua sacrificing himself on that tree so that we ourselves will be redeemed, reconciled, back unto you again. We thank you for the atonement, nothing like it. Speak to us your words of truth and grant me utterance here this Shabbat morning so that your truth may sink down in someone's heart and bring forth the manifestation of a true Israelite in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. May be seated. As is what this life is all about, is being a true Israelite. What we are having trouble with today is that some of us haven't really truly been born again. Or let me say this, born anew. Because when you are really truly born anew or born again, your old character of your old man of your old nature, it dies. And it's in the process of a continual death. Does that make sense? But you have to comprehend and understand that there are things that are inside of you that refuses to die. You know what it is because it constantly repeats itself over and over again. You even ask your own self, dang, why in the world did I do that again? Or, man, when am I going to get rid of this dang thought, man? Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the bonds of this death? And he said, I thank my Yah. Through Yahshua Hamashik. But I'll tell you what, with my mind, I'm going to serve Yah. And with this flesh, the law of sin. But we're overcomers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think the real true knowledge is, is to realize your heart condition. You know, nothing should really surprise you. Did y'all hear that video I did when I was down in Jamaica? The video I'm talking about is, uh, I didn't mean to say it. Y'all learn something from that? You find out you may have thought in your mind after it came out that you didn't mean to say it. But the truth is, you meant to say it. Out of the abundance of the what? Heart, the what? Mouth speaks. See, you just didn't know that your heart was that wicked though, did you? Did you? So don't lie no more and say you didn't mean to say it. You just didn't know your heart. Out of the abundance of the The what? Okay, so you did mean to say it. You just discovered another wicked way about yourself. Isn't that right? Now ain't y'all good. It affords us the opportunity to allow that to happen so we could do something about it. Isn't that something? See, we look at this thing the wrong way, man. We look at this thing like, man, God, I'm so wicked. And then we go off into a state of depression rather than thanking y'all. 
Whoo, I'm so glad that this sin went before me. Huh? Now don't that line up with the book? It is the goodness of Yah that leads you to repent. If it didn't manifest itself, you wouldn't have nothing to repent for. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? The prophets told us that our heart is evil and desperately wicked, but we gave ourselves a pass, didn't we? Until it came out. We was like, oh, crap. Huh. Ah, don't justify yourself. Huh? Repent and turn from your wicked ways. Isn't that beautiful? Ain't y'all good? Anybody didn't think that repentance is good because we're too busy experiencing the badness of it. That's how good y'all is. Man, ain't that beautiful. He didn't leave us dead in that sin. Or dead in that trust base. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that all right? That's all you can say, y'all's good. Hallelujah. You can. Now, if he ain't never delivered you from nothing, you can't say he ain't been good. Usually we say, deliver me from the evil and wicked man, but we forget about ourselves. Yeah, deliver me from me. <laughs> Help me for me. <laughs> I'm the one that's standing in need of prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And you know, you're a whole lot more compassionate toward others when you realize what you've been delivered from. Usually some of the most mean-spirited people are people who have never had forgiveness themselves. You understand? I mean, you, you do have to go in hard and stuff, but as soon as you see that the light bulb went on and they got it and they repent, then you're there with open arms. That's the way y'all does with us. Now, the Bible says unless a corn of wheat falls to the ground, now, that corn of wheat has got to do something. It has to do what? Die, Die to itself. Now, mind you, y'all sure said that because there were some Greeks that showed up at the feast. And he was telling them, unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die to itself. That's a seed. If it doesn't die to itself, then it cannot bring forth much fruit. Isn't that amazing? Even in the natural, when you plant a seed, it has to die in order to bring forth much fruit. Is that the reason why some of you ain't bringing forth fruit? Because you ain't dead? Uh oh. I mean, the principles again. Let me go over here for a second. I know we're here. Let me go over here. I guess I'm at the, oh, here we go. Who ugly reading glasses is these? Dang. Dang, them things are ugly, man. Nobody can read through them things. All right, here we go. John 12, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Now, if we follow today's sentiments, Greeks can't even come to worship, could they? You know what I mean? So we, gotta, we get to pick and choose who we want to believe in on. He said that the Greeks came to worship at the feast. Man, I got all kind of good-looking pair up here now. Some of y'all just blind as I am, ain't you? Don't even read. <laughs> all right. The same came, therefore, this must be a sister's glasses, because my fat hair is stretching these things out, boy. They up here going... The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda, and of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. 
And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew, and Philip telleth Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He's kicking his in here now. Look at this. And he that loveth his life shall lose it. Y'all hearing this? That means some of you love yourself so much that you don't want to lose you. Now don't think about it. Is this just for then or is it for all ages? He repeats this over and over, and over again in Matthew 10. Talks about your family. Forsaken all, don't he? It's all throughout the book. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Now, let me, let me see this. You have to actually detest and abhor and hate this very existence. Isn't that backwards from today's sentiment, though? But if you refuse to die, then you'll never have eternal life. You know the reason why Jesus could talk like that? Because he did it. See, these religions of today, they will make you think that Jesus paid it all. Unto him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. He was. See, it's white as snow. See, as long as he paid it all, then you ain't got to pay nothing then, right? That's what he's saying, right? It's nice to read about Daniel and the lions then, but you ain't got a den to get in, though, do you? You know, it's nice to hear about everybody else's story and their plight, but they pave it all so that you can live your pathetic little life. And just say a few words. I was talking to some people on the other side of the world, and I said, well, let's say south of the world. And I said, um, I said, it's a nice area down here, isn't it? I said, yeah, it's going to burn. Do you know what I heard in my spirit? Can't you just shut up and enjoy? I go down, how in the hell the devil get all the way down here in Jamaica? <laughs> and I said, I, go, I, can, I can understand hearing that in Tennessee. I said, I am enjoying myself. Because you're going to burn too. <laughs> you know I got some devil trolling me everywhere I go. It's a constant fight. <laughs> Isn't it? Just because I told some people it's going to burn, it's going to burn. It's just a good climate. It's still wicked. The seawater stink. The chlorine stinks in the pool. Nice weather, nice trees. Can't eat them. Oh, yeah. I said, man, I left the states to come down here to get some peace and hear your ass is. <laughs> I said, look like we got a fight then, don't we? Devil show up everywhere, don't he? Then look what he says right here. And if any man serve me, now that's a key statement to the word serve. Serve, servant, slave. Let's just be truthful. 
who do you really truly serve? I mean, some of us really put forth the illusion that we act like we're serving Yah. That's like some of us, if we give somebody something, we do it with the intentions that fly under the radar perception to receive something back. Now, what we don't do is disclose those intentions. Huh? Oh, how you doing, Ron? Ron Young, he just tuned in. How you doing, Ron? Somebody go, how you know he tuned in? Because when I was looking at the service down in Jamaica, guess who I seen name popped up, spying on our liberty? Ron Young. You're finally keeping the Sabbath day, huh? <laughs> Isn't that all right? But when you take account of this, you think about this for a second. Every single one of us that have actually died to ourselves, we have actually received life, promised to us, while not yet in it. Most people can't fathom giving up a $200,000 job just to come and live like a bunch of farmers. Most people can't imagine giving up a $20,000 job. Think about that for a second. He gives you 70 years, 80 by strength. Is that right? That's what he does. He gives you that. And then all of a sudden, you come up on those years, you look back over your life and find out that you didn't spend no time serving him. And they got you believing you can say a deathbed repentance. And you're going to just walk right on in the kingdom. And get a high seat in glory. Y'all ever believe that before? Yeah, I used to believe you could sin, live like hell, and then the day you're getting ready to die. I had it all figured out. When I was jumping out of them planes, man, if my chute didn't open, I said, I got the rest of my life to get it right. I figured I had every bit of four seconds before I go splat. So I could have said a, a repentance. Don't mind you if I was drunk, drunken, and cooler brown the night before. And I was going to go into his kingdom and accept one problem. Now that I am born new and I read the precepts, he told me that if I mocked him, I'm going to put it in a way you can understand it. In this life while you are in full strength. He said he's going to mock you too. In your day of hardship called calamity. In other words, don't think me a fool. Don't let these people fill you up and pump you up with a bunch of philosophies. Thinking that they're going to sway and change my mind. I go, man, whoo, this is straight talk right here. Isn't that beautiful? So most people, believe it or not, even amongst us in here, there's only a remnant. Did y'all hear me? Yes, even amongst us, there's a remnant. He said that many are called. Many are called. There was a lot of people here at Tabernacles, wasn't it? Many are called. But out of that called, few are what? Chosen. Well, I, I, I know I'm chosen. Many are called. Few are chosen. Yeah, you know if you're chosen. Because you don't have a life no more. Uh-oh. Most of you can't give up your life. Most of you don't have nothing to give up and you still can't give that up. No, it's real talk. We, we're, we're not doing this just for our little health in these little miserable days. I've been living long enough to know that this, this all there is in the world is nothing but heartache and trouble. I've seen so many people just without y'all. Just without y'all. Not having a, look like they're having a good time, but wasn't having a good time. I've seen so many single women I think they actually just went down there hoping that they could meet somebody. Bunches of them. 
some retired from GM. So Carol and I talked to one of them. She retired from GM. Very nice pension. House paid for. Married and divorced two, three times. 61 years old, all by herself. And the best thing she can do at 61 years old is have all this money, be alone, and float around in a swimming pool in Jamaica. No headship. So Carol, we, we talked like that, didn't we? He's like, man, that is sad. Carol's that is just so, so sad. It really is. Y'all's way is just right. And of course, after talking to her, you can see the reason why no man don't want to put up with her. <laughs> then we met this one lady. She just wouldn't shut up, would she, Carol? God. Just, I mean, she just would not shut up for nothing. If a fly flew in front of the bus, she had to say something about it. Just talk, talk, talk. Even her husband was frustrated with her. He was telling her, will you just be quiet? I looked over there, I said, she can't. <laughs> she just couldn't do it. You know why? Because there's a spirit in her to defy the woman of a meek and quiet spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. Every woman is meek and quiet ain't shutting up either. There used to be an old rock group called Quiet Riot. And they wasn't quiet at all. Think about that though. You quiet, but there's a riot going on inside of you. That's bad. Really bad. In other words, the moral of all this, you've got to die. You literally got to die. Did y'all hear my conversation last night I was having at the bar? I felt like Jesus sitting at the bar having a conversation. I talked about it on blog talk all night long. Believe it or not, the conversation of husband and wives is big. You know why? The most expensive contract in the history of mankind. Most expensive agreement there is. Can't find nobody worth shit because you ain't worth shit. Oh, that's right. Can't find nobody worth scat because you ain't worth scat. I met people, man, I was down there eating and pass it down. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Man, you be telling the truth. In the airport, same thing. Same thing. People down there using Carol products, didn't even know it. She goes up to Sister Carol, you Carol? A oh, Carol? Uh, yes. Oh, your brother's just beautiful. I said, move out of the way. My glory. My glory. Yeah. Move out of the way. My glory. <laughs> Man, they had everybody. The maid had people coming by the room. You, you, we'll go by the next room, open up that room so she could smell what was going on in our room. Am I kidding you? We wake up in the morning, there's two or three people gathered at the door just to smell all this scent. Y'all think I'm kidding? The maid said, could you just please just leave me whatever's left over, just leave it please. <laughs> One of them took off, one of the managers took off and said and went to the gift shop to talk to the gift shop man to see if they can get our products in the place down there. I told her, I said, man, we got some sisters that can make them stuff and we can fill up this old gift shop. All we got to do is agree on the cut. <laughs> Just loved it. Just love it. Let's get started. Spiritual maturity. Natural born Israel. We have some real, true brothers 
and real friends with us. All right? Notice I said natural born. Okay? So let me show you what a real brother looks like who acknowledges Israel. And their speech and their sound, the spirit, their speech is sound and they tell our people clearly who they are. You know, everybody that's of another race don't go around telling other people who real true Israel is. No, they don't. Because some way, somehow they feel like that they're being left out of the equation. It was fine and good when we didn't know who we were. But there's some real true bona fide born again, reborn again, brothers and sisters that used to be Gentiles that are now Israelites. Somebody said, well, you can't, you can't never be no real true Israelite. Like you're born Gentile. What the hell is an adoption then? See, our problem is we let all these winds of doctrine move us all center. And they come in to this thing and I'm telling you, and these men you can trust because Yah has opened their understanding and they don't make no apologies about it. And I can't throw a pitch up here of everybody, but I want to show you two brothers who are 100% bona fide with us plus nothing. Brother Eric, that's a damn good teacher. Brother Patrick, he be up there with Brother Daniel and him and Brother Daniel be going around to black brothers and Brother Eric, when, when they not listening to Brother Daniel, Brother Eric starts talking, I mean, uh, Brother Patrick starts talking and says, you don't even know who you are. He says, that's bad. I'm a white man and know who you are and you don't even know who you are. He said, you sit down for a second. Let me tell you your history. You know how impactful that is? That's because we've been duped by this. When it's all said and done, Israel, we're the only ones going to be saved. All Israel. Now over in Tehillim 94, 14, listen to this. For Yahweh will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his what? And what does his world teach? That he believed his inheritance has been forsaken. Isn't that right? All right. Romans 11.1, 1, I say then, have y'all cast away his people? Yeah, I forbid. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all pay careful attention to brothers, converted brothers. That includes all of us who do not acknowledge who the real true Israelites are. See, I'm a real true Israelite. That's how you get the message unmixed. You can tell I'm not tainted by Gentile theology. And as for that, I'm hated. You don't see other people who are... Who are after the so-called lineage of Israel talking the way I talk. You don't see converts, people who talk the way I talk. Too afraid to do it. But I submit to you that if they don't talk the way I talk, then you're never really truly going to meet the real true Elohim. They're deceivers, even amongst us, that inside of their cancerous heart, they have an arrogance and a pride about them long time ago I said if you sit up here and think that you can reject natural Israel and think that you're going to get the real true message of the father then you define the prophets you define Yah himself I mean even the prophets even said that there's going to be a goyim that's going to come and seek for the skirt of an Israelite or Yehudi you get it and they say we will follow you because when you put it all together, why are we going to follow you? Because everything we've ever learned from our fathers have all been nothing but lies. Oh, yeah. right. Elder Mitch and I was talking. He said, if you had flipped this thing around and I had learned that here I am is nothing but a goyim piece of trash, you know what I mean. He says, man, I'd be shouting to the rooftop who real Israel is. Because they are the ones that will carry the message untainted. All you have to do is listen, because when it comes out of the mouth, it comes from what? The heart. the heart. It tells you exactly what the real true message is. Remember, Jesus said in Matt TTIU 15, 24, that he has not been sent, but who? To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means all other nations, it ain't for you. And he knew that his sheep was what? 
lost. Isn't that right? So he found his sheep. And he says, this is the message. You carry it to Israel. And then after I'm gone, you carry it to the world. He did say go in all the world, right? And the message we've been hearing today is not the message of Yahshua. It's not the message of Jesus. The message we preach and teach is, but the one that is dominating this earth today is another Jesus. There's going to be a sad day when a lot of people wake up from this sleep right here and find out that instead of going north, they went south. All because they were deceived and believed a lie. You get it? Think about this for a second. Let's, think, let's look at some popular white preachers today. Are they really truly telling you who real Israel is? They believe that they are. And yet, they don't keep the commandments. Then you got these bootlicking Uncle Tom black folks that they don't even believe in Israel. You see, my cadence is different because I know, according to the law, that if someone, even if you're a stranger and you are in the land, you accept these laws, statutes, and commandments, you are Israel. And to make sure we knew who Israel was, he gave you the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Now let's tell the truth. If you really truly want to get down to the nitty gritty of history, there really truly ain't nothing prideful about being called an Israelite. Because all we've done is just make a mess of ourselves throughout all history. We have spent uh, the majority of our inception in slavery. Ain't got nothing to brag about except whips and chains. Yeah, for real. Tell the truth. Ain't that right? And the only reason why we can glory is because of him. That's it. Matter of fact, that's the only reason why anybody can glory. But I often quote this scripture and say it over and over and over again that there's a spirit of Antichrist that want to deny Jesus' flesh. People say, hey, come in the flesh. Well, we already know that, but it's also talking about something else too. See, in this chapter right here, which it should be studied, it goes in great detail to let you know how serious this matter is. I say again, have Yah cast away his people? He ain't talking about everybody in the earth. Who is his only people? Israel. Yah forbid, for I also am a what? Of the seed of and of the tribe of. Yah have not cast away his people, which he what? The one who went in slaveries and captivities and all this other stuff, right? Wrought ye not what the scripture has said of Elias, how he maketh intercession to law against Israel? Why? Stubborn, stiff neck, rebellious, stout hearted. That's right. A uh, 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 people full of iniquity, laden with sins. Huh? Master, they have killed your what? Now, you know what Yahshua said? Remember this right here. The children at the time when Yahshua was walking on his earth said, if we had been back there in those days, we would have not killed the prophets. He says, he says, no, no, hold on, wait a minute. I tell you what, you fill up the measure of your cup. In other words, you complete yourself because you are the children of the very people who have done what? Kill the prophets. In other words, there's tainted bloodline. There are sins in the bloodline that travel all the way as far as to your children's children. And to prove that you'll do the exact same thing that your, that your fathers did who killed the prophets, Yahshua said, you're going to kill me. See, this is serious business. See, even then he was trying to tell them that there is something wrong with the family line. There's something in it that's got to be cleansed. Are y'all hearing this? Really, there's something, there's something bad stuff going on then. Fill up the measure of your cup. That ain't no good thing either. He said, you go ahead and make your sin complete. Get your iniquity topped off. 
Get it on up there because payday's coming. Mind you, what kind of deception is that that you would have thought that you would have never even lifted up a hand against the prophets and you got the Messiah sitting right in front of you telling you you are just like your daddy. Whatever they did, you'll do. Think about this. Who gets mad at the message? Who gets perturbed at the message? Who gets upset at the message today? You are the very children of the fathers that kill the prophets. Yahshua said, I seen you wise men. And you will persecute them from city to city. He ran all the way down how far the persecution will go. And you know it's still the same today. We got people today say I never ever would have crucified Yahshua fresh. I would have never killed the prophets but look at their attitude. I was talking to some people down there and I said I said. I said, why are you getting so upset? All I think I'm doing is telling you the truth. Even if I open up this book and, and tell you to read. See, I'm going to tell you what's going on. Tell you what's going on. Oh, tell me what's going on. I said, you see, this is a setup. Yahshua told us to go. I said, Jesus told us to go into the world and preach his message. You can't see Jesus, but you hear his voice. See, because by the time it comes out of my mouth and enters into your head, his voice is talking. And because you can't recognize your condition, you don't realize that, that, that you're not upset with me, but you're upset with him. Because he disagrees with your fallen nature. And that's why he said light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil continually. The setup is, is that you will say if you saw him, you would never get mad at him. So what he does is he insulates himself inside of us. And he allows you through your mind to persecute us, to persecute me. And all the while you give yourself a pass and say, I'll never persecute him. And he said that if you are persecute, if they persecute the master of the house, guess what, servant? You're going to get it too. See, you don't realize that who you really truly have an offense against is the greater one that made heaven and earth. Because the words that I speak and say unto you, they're not mine. They belong to him. I'm just repeating exactly what he said, just like he said, I am telling you what the Father said. You know what he did? He even got more mad. I understand your condition. You get it? Yes, sir. Get it? Have we ever found ourselves offended at the word? Hmm? Uh-oh, hold on. See, most people think they're offended with Pastor Dow. You're not offended with me. That's just all you know. You're really, truly offended at the word. You're really, truly taking issue with the word. He said, my words, they are spirit, and they are what? Life. Today, we live in a world that people are afraid to tell the word because they take more in mind the account of your feelings and emotions. I call that extortion, pillage. Because they rather hold you and your admiration in person more than the word of Yah. Thereby not delivering your souls. So he says, look at this. Master, they have killed your prophets, dig down the altars, and I am left alone. And they seek my what? Right. But what said the answer to Yah to him? I have reserved to myself how many? 7,000 7, men who have not bowed their knee to the image of what? Right. Notice it didn't say 7,000 women because women are bowed their knee in a minute. The devil always used the woman to get to the man. Uh-oh. Think about that. I said to Sister Carol, we did a lot of talk. You can tell that, right? I said, I said, Satan has really got y'all messed up. Y'all are so tore up 
y'all are so clamorous and foolish. Now she knows I'm not speaking about her now. But I told her how much she was a fool was too prior to conversion. And I wasn't even nowhere in, in the faith. I was judged though, wasn't I? I said, you think about this. I said, you get a woman. All right, come here, Jordan. You get a woman, all right? And this is what Satan has done to y'all women today. Turn around. All right? Now, we're going to pretend like she's a worldly woman. All right? First thing he do is he, y'all get so down on yourselves, you get fake hair. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have fake hair, you color it. Because you're not content with the way y'all made you. Am I telling Drew? Yeah. Weaves. Huh? Somebody else's hair. Somebody else's hair that probably from another country done sacrificed it to a, an idol. You weave it in and sew it in in your head and then you flaunt your falsehoodness. Hold on. Fake eyelashes. You trim and cut the eyebrows and everything else because you're not content with the way you are. You look in the mirror, boy, and that demon making you what he wants you to be. Fake eyelashes. Then sometimes you look in the eyes, look like you're looking at a demon. Like, dang, contacts, colored. Oh, I got a wrinkle. Botox. Why is it that men ain't got none of these challenges? Uh oh. Then you got fake lips. First you used to. You first used to talk about the black woman because her lips was big and bubbly. Now you're trying to go out there and get them bigger than hers. <laughs> fake breasts. Fake hips. Fake ass. Fake toes. Fake fingernails. You're just damn false. Screw it up as hell. You just false as hell. Look what Satan done. There's no way an Israelite sister should envy that crap and that mess. And then the world want to sell up and say, I ain't going to look like that. <laughs> what you should be saying, I ain't going to look like that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Isn't that something? I said, now you name one thing I ever tried to put on is fake. Nothing. Men don't look in that mirror and then all of a sudden them demons are trying to remake you into their image. If you do, you got problems. Your hair turned gray, you died. You know how, much, how stupid you look 70 years old with black hair or brown hair? You know how stupid you look? You know, somebody out there got to be watching this today. Because, you know, this don't fit none of our women in here. They're like, yeah, 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 that's true too. They do, the, the devil got you everything to make you feel good about yourself, but the really truly is he's making you into his image. Of course, we ain't got to talk about the makeup, right? Kabir did a good video on makeup. Y'all see you're going to fall out all over the place. Y'all need to go watch that video. Isn't it nice to be able to see a woman for what she really truly is? Now, you can't even tell if it's a woman or man. I know she's a woman because she's a sister. I know she's a woman because her husband says she's one. That's a woman. Today, you may end up with a man that looks like a woman. Them boogers are dying every day, too. What do they call them? Trans, transgender? 
They dress up like women. Transvestites. Say that's how far disconnected. I don't know what the hell these none of them is. It's tr trans, trans, true, trans. I don't know. But anyway, here you are, transformers. <laughs> here you are. You out in the club, everything. You think you got a woman. You go back. Next thing you know, you you up slopping, spitting, can on him. Next thing you know, it's time to do it. Do, and you reach down and you grab you. <laughs> and then people wonder why people are taking guns out and shooting them. But this is how screwed up the world is. You'll go to jail for the rest of your life because, because somebody done deceived you. Try to impose themselves on you using deception. Bless you. Y'all need to have conversations like this so when your children grow up, they'll know what's right from wrong. Because the way this world going, your children ain't going to know right from wrong unless you teach them. I'm telling you. That's why we talk like this. I love it when our children hear this stuff and they do like this. Ugh. Ugh. That's nasty. Ugh. That is nasty. Tears have told me, don't put that stuff up there no more. Please, Pastor. I have nightmares. Isn't that beautiful? Let's move on. For well, not bowed except in the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also, there's a remnant according to the election of what? Grace. Election of grace. Meaning you've been elected. Boast not against the what? Grace. So there are some natural branches. They're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Not just the western hemisphere. They're scattered throughout all the corners of the earth. And the book tells the rest of the world, don't you boast against the branches. But if you boast, you bear not the what? Root, which is who? Yahshua, right? But the root you. You will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That's Christianity. They tried, that's one of the hallmark verses right there. Grafted in to stay a pagan. Isn't that amazing? Well, because of what? Unbelief they were broken off and you stand as by faith. Be not high-minded but fear. For if Yahweh spared not the what? Now let's go over this. Did he spare the natural branches? He couldn't spare the natural branches. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Greeks, Romans, Persians. You follow me? And then all the other captivities. Modern day slavery. Check it out. So they hadn't been spared then, right? Take heed, lest he also do what? Spare you not. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the what? I want y'all to pay attention and keep that locked in because we're going to get to this today, all right? Of y'all on them which fail severity, but towards you, goodness, if you continue in his what? All. Otherwise, you also will be what? If y'all would do that with his own people, don't you think you could come in here and grace and favor and, and, and quoting all the grace and everything else in favor and you can still live in iniquity? And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for y'all is able to graft them in again. So let's stop for a second. So everybody is grafted in. Uh-oh. I mean, if you've gone astray and you are broken off, you got to be grafted back in too. Ah, oh, never mind. Hey, it'll help somebody. For if you were cut out of a wild, out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature, talking about the Gentiles, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? The Gentile Christian church has not become Israel. End time prophecy. I want y'all to listen. Because see, these things are usually not rehearsed much. So we really truly got to hear this. Because whatever the prophet spoke is coming to pass. And there's a lot of things that the prophet said that has not come to pass yet. And so, rest of the world, you listen real close. 
for Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own what? Not them squatters over there. Not them usurpers over there who are playing Israel. <laughs> Not them. All right? And the strangers shall be joined to them with them and they shall cling to the house of Jacob. Y'all hear that? And all the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaidens. Now, a lot of people teach this, that they try to do this thing by calling stuff. You got to go back to the Torah. That's why you have to know the law. See, you, in other words, you better become Israel right now. So that when, you, when it's time for you to take over, because of y'all sure, you ain't got to worry about being the strangers. And if you were strangers, you could still have an opportunity to be able to, to come on in with us. But you get to bring, you get to dress our vines. That's right. I, I wish Jesus would come right now. Just so I can get Donald Trump to dress my vine. Get Obama to, to bring me some wine. I ain't dressing it. We're laboring in the vineyard right now. Y'all better listen to this. Look, let's go back here. And, and the house of Israel shall possess them. In other words, the same way that the nations possessed Israel. And they did it in iniquity too, boy. In the land of Yahweh, for servants and handmaidens, and they shall take them, what? Captives, who captives that they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. This is a promise. See, this is, you're not going to hear this in Christianity, in any flavor, that this is what the kingdom is all about. The kingdom is all about us ruling. The kingdom is all about us reigning. The kingdom is all about his government in this world, which there shall be no end. And somebody got to govern the providences of this earth. That's why I say you are a fool to sit up and take this life and trade this little measly, miserable time for eternity. You are a fool if you pass up this salvation. You are a damn fool to not give yourself over to Yah and serve him. I promise you one thing. Eternity is going to be a whole lot longer than this life. This whole entire story is about Yah's love for his people because of our disobedience, Yah turned us over to the nations. Those of us who are obedient will rule over the nations in the kingdom. This is what the entire book is about. Yahweh redeeming his people and placing true Israel back on top of the world. Y'all hearing this? Let's go one more. Isaiah 49, 25. But thus saith Yahweh, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with you, and I will save your children, and I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as the sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I am Yahweh, am your Savior, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You go listen to all these fairy tales they got out there. They're not telling you that this is what's going to take place when y'all sure come. They thinking they're going to be sitting at the banquet table with us. <laughs> huh? No, you got to have dogs outside of the gate of the city. This tough talk, right? Y'all don't like that? Oh, I love this talk right here. The Goyim will seek us out if they want to be saved. I've always said it. How can you accept Yah but reject his people? Reiterating it, I'm telling you. 
the very what, what does Christianity do? They try to peddle these Jewish people and cram it down your throat, especially that 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 pig John Hagee. If they you tell them the real true Israel, boy, they'll reject it and despise it. They're enjoying their little kingdom here and now. Uh oh. See, the very reason why you are able to hear this today is because you're listening to a true Israelite. My speech is different because I speak as one that has authority ordained by Yah. Jeremiah, look what he said. Oh, Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles, the Goyim, shall come to unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. See, the word, the Torah is the word, the way, the truth, the life expressed in Yahshua. I said that slow, on purpose. See, anytime you, you, you talk about the word, the instructions, you're talking about Yah himself because his word is inseparable from him. To come up with an idiotic statement by saying we're not under the law, that means you're not under the authority of Yahweh. There's more to that statement than that. We don't have to obey the word. What? The word that was made flesh? The word. The Torah. You get it? Let's see what David had to say. Psalms 119, 1. Aleph, blessed are the undefiled in the way. Didn't Jesus say it? I am the way. Who walk in the law of Yahweh. Psalms 119, 1, 42. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is the what? Did not Jesus say I am the way and the To the law. Deuteronomy 32, 46. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe and do. Not suggest to them, command. All the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. Did not Yahshua say that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And though this thing. You shall prolong your days in the land. Whether you go over Jordan to possess it. Hebrews 10 7 says the same thing that Psalms 40 verse 7 says. Then said I. Lo. I come in the volume of the what? Book. Because it is written of what? John 1 14 says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and full of truth you got to admit that there's people in this world that are teaching his word that are really not qualified to handle this word they're not and even if they have it in their hand they're really truly not teaching the word they're teaching a philosophy they're telling you what the reformer said Y'all know who the reformers are, right? Those, those Gentiles that came through well, 14, 15 centuries after the apostles and prophets. They teach that theology. The book clearly tells you, don't let any man come and add anything or take nothing away from his book. If they do, I'm going to take away their name out of the book of life. I'm going to blot them out. Y'all see what's going on? The whole word has been hijacked because that's what Satan did. Bloodline rebellion. Bloodline and rebellion. Now, you know, some time ago in 1 Peter 5 8, we went over the word adversary, right? Be sober, watch because you're what? Adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We know that word is antidecos, right? Meaning he is an opponent in a lawsuit. Is that right? 
Everything that goes on in this earth right here, Satan is trying to build a case against you in the court of heaven in order to get a guilty verdict. Y'all hear me? Revelation 12.10 says, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before y'all day and night. We know the accuser is categorios. Against one in the assembly that is a what? A complaint of law. Complaint at law. You get it? So anytime you're dealing with some type of, I want y'all to listen to me. Are y'all listening? Anytime you're dealing with some type of sickness or disease that does not seem to respond to healing that is rightfully yours. Because did not Isaiah prophesy that the Messiah will come with healing in his wings? And when he came, did he not heal all that were oppressed of the devil for Yah was with him? And did he not make it available to us and he gave us the command and the commission to go and heal the sick? So anytime that we're doing it and it does not seem to respond to healing that is rightfully yours, we must examine the bloodline. You have to examine the bloodline. The area, examine the bloodline area, the hidden legal issues. Because remember, See, the one thing we let slip all the time is, is that the father told us over and over again, third and fourth generation, third and fourth generation, tenth generation. He's speaking to us. He's telling us something. There's something greater that's going on whenever you entertain sin, iniquity and transgression. I'll go so far as this. Rebellion and stubbornness. You may do it, and you may live to regret it afterwards. But you still are going to pay for that attitude. I'll go even farther. If you sin, you can repent. But you're still going to pay the penalty of that sin in this life. See, most people think that when you repent, that moves away the, the punishment of the sin. Y'all hear me? We think we say, okay, I'm sorry, good. Oh, boy, I'm free. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Don't you be naive like that. See, the whole purpose of the instructions is to keep us away from sin, from entertaining it. Brother Shane, get Matthew chapter 23. Let's go over this for a second. I'm going to show you what I was talking about earlier, all right? Verse 25 through 33. Are y'all here? We get into a very important part of today's message. Don't let this slip. Read when you have it. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You hear that? That's, how, that's what Jesus called the preachers of the day, the teachers of the day, the theologians of the day. You have a woe, you hypocrite. He defined who they were at the time they were scribes and Pharisees. Today they are doctors, theologians, <laughs> scholars, <laughs> so-called preachers. They got every title under the sun. Ain't that, right? Ain't that right, Ron Young? You got every title on the sun. Ruling elder, chief, whatever, so-and-so, grand poobah, theologian, theologian, seminary, blah, 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 blah. I go, boy, that's a lot of titles, isn't it? Should we bow down? <laughs> go kick rocks, huh? Roar to you, scribes and Pharisees. Sit, Ron Young know I'm doing it all in good fun. He's really a kind man. Oh, yeah, he's a good man. He, he ain't nobody good, but you know, he's, he's really a kind man. I like him. I like him. He's just double-minded, but I like him. Read on. For ye make clean the outside of the cup. What do people do today? You're more interested in how you present yourself rather than cleansing yourself. You're more interested in, in how people view you from an outward perspective. Then when you get behind closed doors, the real you come out. That's what the scribes and Pharisees do. They will put on a show when they go out in front of everybody. They will represent the trueness of the way that the law is supposed to be to the exactness of it. But behind them and inside of them, read on. For you may clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within they are full. Of extortion. You feel that? Full of extortion. They know how to pillage you. 
They know how to extort you. They know how to use you and abuse you because they have the law and they know that they have it and you don't. Because remember, everybody didn't carry around Bibles. They were shutting up the kingdom. Today, everybody got a Bible and the kingdom still shut up to you. <laughs> we can sit up there and read a word. You ever heard, you ever heard of Yahshua says, then I'm going to say to you in that day, you depart from me. You that work what? Iniquity. Now you go look up that word iniquity. The real true translation should be, you depart from me, you that transgress law. That doesn't fit the Christian paradigm today. The house of cars starts crumbling. Don't they have more impact when you say you depart from me, you that transgress the law? We know iniquity means you're in a crooked way. Is it right? But let's define the crooked way. So go click on the word and see what it says. You get it? Read. But within they are full of extortion and excess. Excess, come on. Thou blind Pharisee. You what? Thou Don't blind. the blind lead the blind? Read on. Cleanse first that which is within the and cup. See what I mean? And we spend so much time cleansing the outside, putting forth the illusion, trying to make everybody think that we're clean on the inside. But this is the way Yahshua talked to the preachers of his day. You cleanse first the inside of the cup of the platter. You put more emphasis on that. Read on. That the outside of them may be clean also. Read. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Isn't that amazing? You mean tell me that y'all shouldn't have no problems insulting people? I don't have no problems insulting fake, false, phony preachers either. Hypocrite. <laughs> Come on. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres. Which indeed appear beautiful outward. See, everything is about a show. Everything is about how you appeal to the eyes of man. The way you look at men. You know, outward adorning. Come on. But are within full of dead men's bones. Full of dead men's bones. That's what you, that's what you really look on the inside. Come on. And of all uncleanness. Do you hear that? All unclean. You know how to hook, crook, jive, steal, thieve, wrestle the law. You know how to take advantage of people. You know, you know what the sad part about it is? It's bad if you know this law and you know that people who don't know this law and yet you use the law to extort them, to take advantage of them. There are people that do, do stuff like that to you. They will. Just like a lying man will lie to get one of you sensitive women who have done nothing but spend, you know, you have been done nothing but experience rejection all your life. Somebody come up to you and just tell you in and out of everything, show you a little bit of interest and stuff, and next thing you know, they got you. Extorting you. Yeah, for real. He lying, you lying, everybody lying because ain't nobody looking at the inside of the couple of the platter. Uh-oh. There are people that felice you and do the same thing. Even in this. Come on. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. See, everything is about the appearance. Everything is about how you represent. Everything is about show. But you're really a hypocrite on the inside. You want people to believe that you're true. But you're really dead. And full of extortion and lies and hypocrisy. You're really fake, false, and phony. Y'all get this? Read on. But within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Whoa! Whoa! Unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets. Man, everybody loved that work ethic. Man, they're going, isn't that amazing? Same thing they did. They, they, first of all, they turned around and they plotted to kill Martin Luther King. Then they turned around and built a monument to him, and now he got a national holiday. Hey, 
Hey! Pretty soon, Muhammad Ali going to have a national holiday. Watch. This is the same thing that people were doing back then. You're the very people that killed the prophets. Here we are, yeah, these many generations. Now you're going to build monuments to let everybody know that you're, you're really with, with, with the law, with the prophets, with Jesus. And you're nothing but killers. Murderers. See what's going on? See, Yahshua was in them. He was in them. And they knew it. That's why they hated him. He was in them. What he was doing was revealing the secrets of your heart. The things that you wouldn't expose because you had it covered up in a veneer that looked righteous. You looked like you were glowing. You looked holy. You loved the praises and lamentations of men. You love sitting in the uppermost chamber and the uppermost high seats. But inside, you're full of shit. That ain't dressing it up. Yeah, scat. You get it? See, this stuff ain't ever preached. Because when you're a hypocrite, I keep telling y'all, you're not going to preach what you're guilty of. Your own conscience will condemn you. Y'all understand that dynamic? There are things that you won't even talk about because you're guilty of it because you're not clear from it. Uh-oh. Did I say something wrong? Y'all hearing me? Trying to help us, Israel, to not be hypocrites. Read on. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets mm. and garnish them. Even garnished them. I mean, think about that. Here you are clean on the outside, dressed up, looking real good. Then you go make a show. Put up a monument to the prophets and, and all the little gullible, deceived people. Look at them. Also that you can gain some notoriety. Also that you can gain a little more respect. So you can deceive them and get them to the point to where anytime you want to be able to pull the card, you can deceive them and extort them and pillage them. That's what people do. Uh-oh, come on. And garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. What did Yahshua say on that? What did Jesus say? Come on. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which that, killed the prophets. That is not in a good way. That means whatever was in them is in you. That's why we always put the emphasis on trying to make sure that you go back. See, don't sit up and try to do this deliverance thing where you're playing victim. And you want to blame everything on your ancestors and you're just an you know, innocent bystander. No, it's done carried through the line and now you own it. If you don't realize that you own it, you can't deal with it. If you can't deal with it, you can never get free because you're not dealing with y'all's law correctly. You know how hard it is to clean something, to clean something that you cook that is baked to the side of the pan? That's, that's the same crap that your ancestors and the stuff that came through the bloodlines. You see, we're up here wanting to get healed, wanting to get delivered, and, and we can't figure out why some people do and some people get healed, some people don't. And we've been struggling and dealing with this for a while, but we ain't even gone back deep enough into the bloodline to find out what's caked to the walls. Y'all hearing me? Because it is his will for you to be healed. It is his will for you to be delivered. It is his will for you to be set free. 
But you can't be going around pretending and acting like everything is okay, garnishing the outside of this body right here. Having speech like everything is all right when you're really hurting. That's hypocrisy. You can't get delivered as long as you are still owning it. Protecting it. You got to come clean. Is that making sense? Because it, again, it is his will to heal. This thing goes even deeper. Read on. Fill you up then the measure of your fathers. You hear that? The fathers went to a certain measure, but you're going to top it off. Now, think about this. The way he's talking to them, he's talking to them like he don't even give a damn if they get delivered or, or set free. If they don't even make it to the kingdom, he has already pronounced a judgment on them. Let me listen to the speech. He ain't talking to them the way he talked to the woman at the well. He ain't talking to them like he talked to the Syrophoenician woman. He's not talking to them the way he talked to the Roman centurion. That's a total different cadence and a total different speech. In other words, you're a hypocrite, you're going to get the same speech. you covering up and acting like you're righteous and you're full of extortion. You're full of death. You're full of misery. Because you're trying to take advantage of people. Their kindness, their niceness, their sweetness. You got hell you're going to pay. You verbally abused, physically abused, but you want to put forth a picture like you are all of that and a so-called bag of chips. You're going to have hell to pay. You use and abuse people for your own advantage and gain. You're going to have hell to pay. Fill ye then up the measure of your cup, is what the father said. You can't help it because you're just like your father. So you're going to fill it up, you're going to top it off, and you're going to bring indignation and wrath to the zenith. Mind you, these are religious people. These, people, these ain't people out there in the world who know they're wicked. These are people that know how to act better than Hollywood. Read on. Ye serpents. You what? Ye serpents. <laughs> you, you, you know, no, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Oh, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. You're going to find some of him coming back in flame and fire. You're going to find him roasting and torching some people's asses. That's what you're going to do because you're a liar. Extorting the people. Even amongst your own self. Remember, he's also talking about you children who are deceivers. You're just like your daddy. In other words, there's, he, he, this is a big passage of scripture of the word that he wanted us to put emphasis on. And it's hardly ever preached. We usually like ignoring stuff like it because it's uncomfortable. Bloodline. Attitudes. Ways. Wicked ways. Perspectives and point of views. Anything to try to gain an advantage. You wouldn't believe how you act when it's something you want and you know somebody can deliver it to you. That's when the hypocrisy comes out. As soon as you get what you want to achieve, you go right back to set point you. Y'all hearing me? Oh, it's going to go a little bit deeper than this. Y'all mean to tap out and call it real quick for y'all? Let me call it. Y'all got enough right now, right? No. I'm telling you, this is how y'all still talking. Now, read on. Ye serpents. You serpents. Ye generation of vipers. You generation of what? Vipers. vipers. Yeah. 
You know, vipers, you generation of slanderers. Falsehoods. Read on. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? What? You see, he just flat out told them, you are going to hell. <laughs> Basically, listen, how can you escape? In other words, it's so rooted. It's so embedded inside of you. How can you escape the damnation of hell? This is the word. The way. The truth. And the life. Who knew all men. Ain't no hiding with him. Come on. Go to 34 through 36. Might as well keep it rolling. Wherefore, behold, I, I, I send unto you prophets. Look at this. And wise men. Look at this. He said, you people are, you're ruling right now, but every time I turn around, I send a prophet. And I send a wise man to stop you in your mess. But, read on. And scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. You know why? Same way they did you, y'all sure. They didn't want their place to be removed. Hmm? That's like you got these wicked people that, let me see, the last one <laughs> was named Denzel McGee. Yeah, he come here to expose me. Y'all know I let him run, didn't you? And then look who he ended up getting exposed. He sat back in that room and cried like a baby behind them closed doors. Balling and squalling. Was he not, Sister Carol? Balling and squalling like a baby, begging for repentance. I did. I said, man, go ahead on. You, you forgive him. No sooner you leave out of here, back at the same old mess again. So that's a good example how you can see who is one of these people. You get it? I mean, if you really had an issue with me, man, come to me. If I, but you, you heard it all. What did he really have against me? Nothing. See, these are the ones who flip the script and get you to look one way so that you don't see the other. You get to look there, but you don't get to see what's behind my back because you're too focused on this over here. Mm -mm -mm. You see it? Also, you can insert the false doctrine that there is no Messiah named Yahshua, but King David is going to be the king. He's your Messiah. I ain't never heard about David being impaled on no tree for me. If David was here, he'd probably do you like a liar. Lying on him. That's a bad thing when you lie on the dead. Somebody got to testify for him. Oh, look at him looking. Read on. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogue. See, today they ain't got enough, they ain't got enough huspa to scourge nobody in the synagogue, so they use words. And the internet. Because, see, we, we're different type of Israelites. We, we ascribe to the Maccabean theology. <laughs> I did ask somebody, said, so, you know, you talk pretty tough, so if somebody come up to you, I used to ascribe to this too, and if they slap you while you preaching, I said, if they get there. I said, because they try to slap me while I'm preaching, I said, I'm going to stomp a mud hole in them. Whatever you mean for me, I'm going to got ten times the wrath coming back. In other words, you ever heard of Nehemiah? I'm going to lay hands on you. The world ain't familiar with no Israelites like that. You forget all about them. Think about this. When they came to take Jesus... First thing that Peter did was pull his sword out and cut off his ear. Jesus didn't tell him to sell the sword. Sell it to the government. You get rid of that sword. Peter. No, Jesus just put the man's ear back on and told him just put it back in your sheep. In other words, keep it on you. You may need it one day. See, the persecution that you often read about in Voice of the Martyrs and all this other stuff is when the government had already had them imprisonment, when their ability to resist was taken away from them, 
then they end up becoming martyrs. But if you look at the history of our people, they just didn't willfully go to the death. They were fighting. Go read the book again. See, everybody forget about Jesus being that man, huh? He goes into the temple. First thing he do is take a whip. Pow! Knock the hell out of the bankers. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. <laughs> I suppose... The G, I suppose that they want this new Jesus going to be coming back. He's going to come back with cupcakes in his hand. <laughs> Handing out three-tiered cakes and pies to everybody. This faggot-ass Jesus they talk about wouldn't harm nobody. The one I know is going to shed so much blood, it's going to come up to the horse's bridle. And he is doing it all for his people. Told you, that's a real one. That's a false one being teached. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Read, bro, saying. And persecute them from city to city. Man, they will chase you down from city to city. Nowadays, they ain't got to use gas. All they got to do is click a button on the internet. (laughs) Pow, 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 pow. Go ahead. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Stop. You remember his blood cried from the ground. It had a voice. Y'all hear that? The blood of the ancestors, when they're unjustly killed, it cries from the ground. How long will you avenge us of our adversaries? Oh, I got a time. Still ain't going to stop them from saying, how long? See, vengeance is in his mind. Vengeance is in in the sight of his eyes. Vengeance is mine. And I will repay. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Hey, don't that sound like Bob Hope? Frank Sinatra? No, not one. (laughs) See, there's a false Jesus and there's a real one. Read, Brother Shane. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. That's bad. You slew him between the temple and the altar? I bet they did it in fury too. Zealous. Come on. Verily I say unto you. What do you say? All these things shall come upon this generation. Y'all hear that? And it did come up on that generation. 70 AD. When the Romans came in and sacked the temple. And made sure that Israel was scattered from that point on. No respect for his service. No respect for the altar, no respect for the temple, no respect for Yah himself. You don't even deserve to be in the land. Asa, y'all know that King Asa was a righteous king? King Asa was a king that carried a very good report. He was one of the righteous kings in Israel. Yet and still, we're going to use him to bring forth a point today of what I'm talking about. Bloodline and sins. Y'all hear me? Listen to what the book said. Well, first of going is bring sin. Okay. Ace of sin are not trusting Yah. Bring your sin upon yourselves by, here it is. Listen, listen very closely. Rejecting the word of the men of Yah. Nobody's ever told you to be careful about your attitudes. I have. Nobody's ever told you to be careful about your response. I have. Paul said, you know, even in weakness, you receive me. 
because you already knew who I was as a man, and you didn't even let my infirmity despise. You didn't even despise me, even in my temptation on my infirmity. Today, that man ain't got no governor whatsoever at all. No, they have no governor whatsoever at all. They actually think that, well, I can talk to anybody any old kind of way that I want. Well, let's go into the book, see if we believe the book, okay? Second Chronicles 6, 16, Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramallah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Beshai was building. And he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. And at that time, Ananiah, the seer, came to King Asa king of Judah, and he said unto him, Are y'all listening? Because you have relied on the king of Syria. See, what Asa was doing, he was relying on all the protections that he had made with these treaties with all the, the countries around about him. And he no longer depended on Yah anymore. He, he, he relied on all his allies. And not rely on Yah your Elohim. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and Elubians a huge host and very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you did not rely, yet because thou didst rely on Yahweh, he delivered them into thy hand. For the eyes of Yahweh run to and what? Fro throughout the whole what? To show himself strong in the behalf of of them whose heart is perfect towards him. You got a perfect heart towards him. He, he seeks he all up and down this earth to be able to do something for you so you can show that Yah's with you. That's what he just says. Listen to what he says. Herein you have done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth you will have wars. That's what the seer said to Asa. What's important is how Asa responds. So how did Asa respond to the message of the seer? Listen how you respond to correction. It could be determined. It could be a determining factor of sin and disease in your life. I'm going to pray that again. Listen. How you respond to correction could be the determined factor of sin and disease in your life. Remember Saul, right? Samuel said to him, for rebellion. This, this one verse is loaded. Is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. Notice, this is just rebellion. This is not going out doing nothing to nobody. This is just rebelling against Yah and his word. This is just rebellion against the most high. I told you the world today, they would receive Saul over David as a king, hook, line, and sinker, because he cared more about you and your well-being than, than the word himself. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and I die. You notice I got all that in red, right? That's pretty rough now, right? Watch this. Because you have rejected the word of God. What did he reject? But everything that he did outwardly looked like he was serving Yahweh. He didn't kill the king. He took the best of the cattle for all the people. For all the people. Huh? He has also rejected you from being what? He didn't take his kingship from him. Y'all said, you rejected my word? I'm going to reject you from being king. What does that mean? You no longer have my covering. You no longer have my protection. Not against your enemies anymore. I'm not going to be the glory and the lift of your hand anymore. Nobody can really truly see it when you're rebelling against Yah. Except those who have a discerning eye. Think about this. Then Asa was wroth. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Is that the wrong response? 
How about you when you get corrected from someone when they bring you a word that you know is true and stuff, but because you don't know the condition of your wicked heart, you get angry. You get burning inside. You get upset. Is that true? Come on. Correction is grievous unto them that do what? For sake of the way. Isn't that right? But whom Yah love, he correcteth. And he chases every son who he receives. Is that right? But you, you get mad, you get upset, you get angry. Because of the arrogance that's hidden inside of you. You burn on the inside. When somebody give you a word of righteousness. Because you're so wicked. Look at this King Asa. I told you King Asa was a good king. One of the good kings in Israel. Be a good king. And mess up with y'all though. One time. Let's see what happened. And they swore raw with the seer. See, because he know that he ain't going to get mad at just y'all. He thinking it's just coming of this seer's own heart. He should know better than that. So who was he really truly angry at then? Y'all, when somebody correct you from a wicked way, who you really truly get angry at then? Huh? But you really like placing it on man, but it's really y'all that you're upset with, right? Uh-oh. See, that's why I tell you, you have to be careful. You better be very careful, especially if it's a man of y'all that come in front of you and he corrects you. You better be careful how you respond, how you react, for your sake. Because remember, the eyes of the Most High Yah is to and fro. He, he's looking to show himself mightily among them whose heart is perfect towards him. Remember now? And Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same way. In other words, here's the man that told you where well, you missed the mark. You got upset at him. You put him in prison. And because you were angry and upset, you even went and oppressed the people that was really for the seer. Yes. Oh, yeah. That has a relationship with the seer. I always told my children, ever since they were young, all the way up in the ministry. I told them, I said, y'all got to listen to something. I'm going to tell you this right now. I know it's going to be hard for you to understand. You're just going to have to choose to believe me. I said, choose. Because you know everybody got their own mind, right? I said, people are going to try to attack me by trying to get to you. They're going to attack you because they can't get to me. I'm too strong for them. So the devil is going to try to do whatever he can to move y'all away. He's going to do what he can to try to make an attack and attempt on you because he can't get to me. You better take heed to my words. I always told you that too. I'm not acting like my family is some perfect thing. We're all in making. Are you following me? But I told them this in my late 20s. You get it? So here's the seer, Hananiah, bringing forth a correction to Asa. Asa gets mad because he's the king. Become very arrogant, very prideful because of his position and, play, and his favor that y'all had towards him. So he think he now can't be corrected. You get it? But he had the wrong response. He got wroth, got angry, and, and when he, after he got finished persecuting the seer by throwing him in prison, anyone that had any fondness to him, he oppressed them as well simply because of your association with them. Y'all hear this? And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. My suggestion is real should be, you should be very careful how you respond to those over you. Verse 11. And look at the acts of Asa, the first and the last seed, that they are written in the book of the sovereigns of Yehudin and Israel. And Asa in his 39th year of his reign was diseased in his feet. Stop. He was fine. He was doing good. He was doing well. Most people don't make this correlation or this association. 
This disease didn't come up on him because he stayed righteous. He rebelled one time against the Most High Yah. What does Shemot 15, 26 says? If you are diligently hearkening to the voice of Yahweh the Elohim and do that which is right in his sight, I will not lay none of these diseases upon you as I have laid upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh your Elohim that do what? Healeth thee. He rebels one time against Yahweh and all of a sudden, look, he gets diseased in his feet. For being angry and upset, responding the wrong way when correction came. Despising the word of Yah. Y'all hearing this? Until his disease was exceedingly great, yet in his disease, he was so angry. He was so bitter. He was so upset. He was so self-righteous that he didn't even get to the point to even seek Yah. So he went outside, not even wanting to talk to y'all no more. So he went to the world, went to the physicians and looked for healing. And Jeremiah 30 says, thou hast no healing medicines. This is how you know you done fallen from grace. You done fallen from favor. So you see what one act of rebellion could do because it's something that is deeply in your bloodline. Rebellion is all in Israel. Stubbornness is all in Israel. Iniquity is all in Israel. Idolatry is all in Israel. Y'all hearing this? And the Bible said, and he sought not to Yahweh, but to the what? Huh. Let's see how that worked out for him. And Asa died. With his fathers. He slept with his fathers and died in the year, in one in the 40 year of his reign. You mean tell me that the physicians couldn't heal him? There's no way a physician can heal you of something that is demonic. Use all the, see what Asa tried to do was go around y'all. How about some of you? And then what you try to do, go around, hoodwink, finagle, and yet your condition still remains? When you go to the men of y'all, you don't get no healing. Then you first thing you do is research the living hell out of the internet to see if you can find some natural herb. If that don't work, you'll soon be in front of the physicians. All your help comes from y'all, but until you're in rebellion. See, something's in her end. Something is going on that is not disclosed to us, but is being disclosed to us. Y'all don't tell us all this because he just wants us to feel miserable. You're already miserable. <laughs> He's trying to deliver us. You get it? Now you tell me how you can be a righteous king in Israel. Having a favor of y'all all this time. And all of a sudden your heart starts turning because of the arrogant evil way you got in you. To where now you trust in all your allies and everybody else you got around you. And you're no longer seeking to the Father. And then you get reproved that Yah even to bring you online. He sends forth a word of rebuke. A word of correction. By a righteous man. And you turn around and you respond. And you are angry, you are mad, and you are upset because you got corrected. Because you are king. King in our days died like flies. See what that response got him? Diseased in his feet. Disease was so great, it even killed him. See, Asa was a real good king, yet his success and arrogant pride came into his heart. He rejected the seer who tried to put him back on track. We will answer for our actions. Nobody gets a pass. Y'all hearing how, how deep y'all is trying to get a hold of? He's trying to do some deep cleansing in us. It's going to take this word to cleanse us to get down in these crevices. Back to the Torah. Repentance 
will not remove the punishment you've got coming. You hear me? Yes, sir. Shimon 34, 6. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh. Yahweh. <coughs> the El compassionate, showing favor patiently and great in kindness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. He forgives what? Iniquity. He forgives what? Transgression. And he forgives what? But he also, from the, before all this, very merciful. Very kind. Is that right? And look what he says. And that will by no means clear the guilty. In other words, by no means leaving unpunished. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children's children. Until the third and the fourth generation. In other words... Just like a father will chasten his son, even after the son says, I'm sorry, so will our heavenly father chasten us after we repent. You better get a hold of this. You better grasp this and stop all these little attitudes and throwing forth these little spirits and, and these rejections of corrections and rebukes and stuff and think that ain't no payday for it. Every sin and every transgression, there's a just recompense of reward. You just can't be running around carte blanche and acting like you have diplomatic immunity and just because you're an Israelite that the devil won't attack you. That you won't give him any legal grounds to oppress you. There's still an order of Yah that we all have to comply to. We all have a condition that we have to meet. And we have to do this in being sober and being vigilant. Because I ever say the devil walk about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Just because you're a saint don't mean you can run around and act like an ain't anytime you want. And because you're sons, you receive a greater judgment. Because the much is given, much is required. This right here should definitely help us to be able to govern our attitudes. It really should. This should really truly help us to be able to try to keep ourselves in the love of Yah. And be very diligent about how we behave one towards another. And always having our spirit and our heart in a condition to be pliable to be corrected for life. Y'all hear me? <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I'm still keep roaring like a lion. I'm going to keep roaring like a lion. Hey, I, let's, let's finish this on a good note. Let's go back vintage 11 years ago when someone was reborn. Who is that? Look at that. 11 years ago, reborn. You know something? <laughs> I hope y'all learned something. Speak and span. You know, we pour some stuff like Drano. We poured it in there and let it, let it soak for a while. Ready to pull the plug? Hopefully all the crap come out with it. Ain't y'all good? Yes, Glory to the king. Y'all is good. Let us stay in Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a deep word, man. Yes, no. Man, y'all told you. Y'all love us, man. Yes, Hallelujah. Most of all, y'all, you are longer worthy all praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for allowing our ears to be able to hear this, that these sins will seek deep down in our heart. We have our helper, the Holy Spirit, we need you to help us to seek out all of this within us so that we can be whole, healed, and complete. Thank you for your truth. We'll continue to keep living for you and serving you because we love the fact that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Encourage all of Israel this holy Shabbat in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. The King coming. <laughs>